I'm down in the basement and I'm working on the battery inverter charging system. Here's the battery I'm using. I got it like a year ago or so. It was at Lowe's on clearance, you know, like 15 bucks. So why not? I actually got two of them, but I need more, uh, more acid for the other battery. Um, I tried initially with this setup using a wall wart as like a, a fake charger load or solar load or water wheel load, you know, but I think this just doesn't put out enough current. It keeps dropping under the use of my charger controller, which is that guy there made by Victron. Um, I forget the exact price for the or cost for this, but I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. And then here's what I'm using for my inverter. I got this real cheap on eBay. Um, no, don't focus there. I got this real cheap on eBay. Somebody had it listed as the 230 volt system, you know, what would be used in Europe, but it was for sale in America. And I thought that was suspicious and the pictures weren't clear enough to say which one it was. Um, I took a risk and I bought it, you know, it's 50 bucks less or 100 bucks less than other going rates on eBay. And here we are. <laughs> uh, I have another cable plugged in there. And that just runs out. That'll be connected to the water wheel. That's, that's an AC wire. And then all the rest of the stuff is speaker wire. I didn't have any, you know, DC stuff laying around. Now, the way this is set up, you can do a load straight off of the controller. Probably best for a DC load. It, this controller does not like capacitive or high inrush inverters. Um, so I could connect an inverter to this load, like this inverter, but that wasn't working for me because this guy, it draws too many amps on startup. So I had to connect this straight to the battery. And then, so this is to the inverter, and then this one's to the charge controller. Now, you can set up this system such that the load will actually control an inverter, but this inverter has a jumper set up, so I'd need some way with a relay to convert, you know, 12 volts into on. And I don't have one of those relays here, sorry. But this works for now. Right now, I am discharging the battery some. It had been on a battery charger or battery maintainer since I filled it up a few months ago. So I'm, I'm drawing down the voltage right now so that when I hook up the water wheel, the charge controller can you know pump some current into it. And for my load right now, I don't know what the load is. My meter, which is a clamp meter. It'll, it'll do AC. Yeah, I just need to strip off a bit more wire there. Let me do that. So I embiggened that insulation there. I have my clamp meter, that's 1.1 amps. This is 115 volts. Here we are on my calculator. So 1.1 amps times 115 volts is 126 and a half watts. So that's what's being made right now, or what's being consumed off the batteries, 126 watts. I don't know what the capacity of this battery is. I looked online, I looked here, there's nothing on the label or anything. So I don't know what the capacity is. But that isn't really the subject of this video. I feel I need to note a few disclaimers. This is not the correct way to connect a battery. There is no GFCI here, there should be one. There are no connections to easily move or reconnect or disconnect things. There are no fuses, except what are in the controller and this. And, and this. This requires a 3 amp fuse on the output, which I'm not doing. I know this is 1.1 amps worth of power. Just these four lights, you know, three lights and a charger. So I'm not going to go over three amps. Um, I have all of this mounted on temporary board. You should probably permanently mount it 
in some better fashion. There should definitely be fuses on both of these leads, one from the controller and one going out to the power supply, or out to the inverter. Also, I'm only gonna use this outside temporarily. This should, if being outside, be in a watertight or waterproof container. This battery container that I'm using is probably not sufficiently watertight for this application if you were to leave it outside but it's okay inside just to protect things from falling across the terminals and shorting it out. I'm monitoring the voltage of the battery through the controller on my phone here. Yes, this is a one plus one. So it says 12 volts, 11.9. Okay, it's the 21st of January, 2018. And today's the first day I get to hook it up. So first I'm gonna take that cover off, hook up the power cord, and then remove my stick down there that's blocking it from rotating. So as you'll recall, this is mounted backwards, it's spinning backwards. So I'm gonna connect the black to the red and the white to the black. Make sure the cord's out of the way. And I can take the stick out. I'm gonna stop the water wheel and start it again so that you guys can hear the MPPT controller kicking in. So there we stop. And you can hear the MPPT controller kicked in there and it started increasing the resistance to slow the motor down. And what it does is it tracks the maximum RPM that you can get power output. So it's not maximum voltage, it's not maximum current, it's where those lines have the maximum area underneath the point. So I turned on the light there, and I have the app open on my phone, and let me show you how many watts we're getting out of this fancy, massive system. Five watts. Four watts. All that for a few watts. Ultimately, this is my output. So it's trying to do that at about 14 and a half volts, 13 volts, somewhere in there. Battery voltage is somewhat stable, but decreasing because I have a 60 watt bulb plugged in. And it's putting point, we'll say 0.5 amps into the battery. So half an amp. I also need to state again that we've sold this property. So that's why this is such a, a small temporary system. It's not weatherproofed, it's not meant to operate for long periods of time. I just set it up to see how many watts we could get. Five watts, come on. Could have done better. Well, okay, maybe not. I'm limited with what I have to work with. One thing I am happy about with this is I, I kind of sized it so it would work if I was overly optimistic. This motor is sufficiently sized to not have a whole lot of resistance. And the chain system is also sized to not have a whole lot of resistance. It probably couldn't get much more efficient than this, you know, given what I have to work with. 
belts could have worked. I could have gone with other motors, um, other water wheel systems, you know, back shot, and, you know, other types, I don't know, breast shot. But this is what I decided to go with because I've always wanted to do this. I wanted to do this from the beginning. Well, that's it for this little series, at least on-site recording. Uh, I'm going to have a few more videos in this series, if you could call it that. I'm going to cover power production, efficiency, my engineering process. I didn't go into this, like, with all wild-ass guesses. You know, they were somewhat educated guesses. But that's not the end of me playing in creeks. I have, at my new place, a very large creek. Well, not that large. Okay, it's very, very tall. It's like 260 feet tall and flows somewhere between 5-10 gallons a minute. So I could make quite a bit of power there if I got permission to use that resource. I've placed a link to the playlist dealing with me playing in this new creek in the description. So please check it out. Expect more videos on that soon. At least smaller videos, not the full system. You know, it's just still me playing around in it. If you want to support me further than just watching these videos, check my Patreon page out. Again, I've put a link in the description for that. A large portion of my earnings from this channel goes right back into making more content, including camera equipment, audio equipment, and literal materials for the production of those videos.